I don't want to be on the news, dog. Well, it's a little late for that, dog. How often do you meet underage girls online? Probably 10, 15. 10, 15. Underage girls you've met online. You say, if anyone ever knew about this, I would go to jail. He confessed to everything. He knew that she was underage. Oh, no. He brought his son with him. He's got his child with him. Y'all want to interview? Hey, how y'all doing? Tonight, the strangest parade of suspects you've ever seen. NBC again. On To Catch a Predator. We've been investigating the national epidemic of grown men using the internet to solicit underage teens for sex. As more and more parents become aware of the dangers, so have lawmakers in Washington. Good evening, I'm Stone Phillips. And I'm Ann Curry. Both houses of Congress have now passed a bill to create the first nationwide registry for sex offenders, which in many states includes online sex predators. This time we take our hidden cameras to Florida. We thought we'd seen and heard just about everything, but what we found there surprised even our own Chris Hansen. A reminder, some of what you'll see is explicit. Hey, come on in! I made some cookies. Hello. They're on the table. Hi. Take a seat. This 49-year-old man and the teenager talking to him have never met before. He probably believes she's the 15-year-old he's been chatting online with for the last week and a half. Change my shirt real quick, but just come in and watch some TV. I'll be right there. Okay. What he doesn't know is she's really a 19-year-old actress we hired to be a decoy, and he has just walked into a Dateline hidden camera investigation. Come on in over here. Have a seat there. Hungry? How does it taste? Great. Wow. These are home baked. Do you want time to finish your cookie or? Um, not really. Okay, so you're good. If I ask you a couple questions. It's the latest in our continuing series of investigations into online sex predators. For the first time, we're in the South, Fort Myers, Florida. Hilton Daniels is Fort Myers Chief of Police. I've had a lot of parents call me and say, hey, I've caught my kid uh, talking to someone over the Internet. Uh, I've had my kids slip out of the house and go meet someone. What do I do? While searching for a way to help parents and children in his community, Chief Daniels says he saw one of our previous broadcasts and had an idea. We decided, well, let's get a hold of perverted justice and have them teach us how to do this operation. We're trying to make contact and get an update right now. Perverted justice, an online watchdog group Dateline has been working with during each of our computer predator investigations. Its members are experts at pretending to be kids online and on the phone. Yeah, you sound nice. Dateline hired perverted justice members to do what they've been doing for the last four years. Chat online with men looking for minors, hoping to meet the teens for sex. The members go into chat rooms and on social networking sites like MySpace and TeenSpot using profiles of young teens. Sometimes the decoys act eager about having sex. He thinks he's talking to the girl. Since perverted justice members want to see these predators arrested, they were more than willing to help out the Fort Myers Police Department. Perverted justice says, hey, not only will we teach you, we'll come down and do it for you. So the next thing I know, we're setting up the sting operation. His left hand is in his pocket. But... Frag, his screen name from Perverted Justice, worked out a plan with Chief Daniels' officers. Once a potential predator makes a date online for sex with a minor, the chat logs will be sent to detectives and prosecutors who are staked oh, out in the guest house behind me. our house. Florida Department of Law Enforcement and the State Attorney's Office, they were reviewing the uh, chat logs to make sure that this person had already violated state statute. We just now got the chat log on, yeah. We'll take a look at it as soon. Under Florida law, it's a crime for an adult to solicit sex with a minor online. Coming to the house was kind of like the icing on the cake. For our latest investigation, we've come to this lovely home in an upscale neighborhood. There are five cameras outside, including one hidden in a palm tree. It covers the street from both sides, able to spot a potential predator's car a block before he arrives. Knocking on the back door, call out. Hey, come on in! As for the cameras inside the house, there are eight. Coming your way, move. Watch this man. He's in the kitchen. From the He's moment the he walks in the door, his every move is caught on tape, although he doesn't know it yet. 
He's coming into the living room. Chris has him. What are you doing here today? Is this some kind of setup or something? What do you mean? I'm just on my way to the beach. He's Michael Willis, screen name generic white male. He's almost 50 years old, and he's been chatting online with a girl who calls herself Jolanda and who says she's 15. He lies to her about his age, typing, I'm 30. You probably don't want me around you. I'm cute, though. Built good. Then he says, We'd have to keep us a secret because of the age difference. Younger girls like you don't come along often. I'd want you again and again. Then he sends an online picture of his penis to the girl who told him she was 15. And how did you meet her? Well, of course, online. You act like I should know that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a common thing now. Just to meet young girls online? No, well, meet any women online. Then I remind generic white male that Jolanda told him she was 15. What? No way. You know, I have the transcript of your conversation with Jolanda. You know what, I don't want this cookie. I just want to get to the beach. Come here, just one second, sir. But generic white male won't be going to the beach today. As he heads out the back, he stumbles off the porch right into the arms of the Fort Myers Police Department. The police quickly take him down to the ground. In Florida, where it's relatively easy to get a permit to carry a concealed weapon, these officers aren't taking any chances. The best thing to do is, as quickly as possible, was to get this person on the ground with their hands behind him and handcuffed. He's taken away in an unmarked police vehicle and brought to this transfer station. Generic white male's car is searched. Um, there's some condoms and uh, things like that in there. And he's put into a marked police car and taken to jail. The next morning, he's brought before a judge, and bail is set. So it'll be a composite bond of $40,000. That's all. Get up on four. The gold car coming down is our boy. After previous investigations in four different states, we've seen and heard some strange things. But even we were surprised at what we found here in Florida. All I got to say is ain't no, nothing going on here, dude. Nothing funny going on here. Coming up, a suspect comes knocking while his sister and her kids wait in the car. How will he explain that one? Your poor sister is waiting outside with two babies in the car? Yeah. When To Catch a Predator continues. Comes. Our 13 cameras are in place and rolling, including one high up in a palm tree. We're able to spot a potential predator's car long before he gets to our house. But this is our boy. The man walking in our back door is 21-year-old David Schumacher, screen name Freebird72000. He's been chatting online with a decoy posing as a young teen named B. Knock, knock. Hey, come on in. Our 19-year-old actress, the decoy playing bee, invites him in. You can try one of my cookies. They're so good. Did you make them? Yeah, I made them myself. All right, I eat one. I like chocolate chip. Online, he invites the girl, who told him she was 14 and a virgin, to a birthday party. And from his online chat, it appears he has his sights on a party for two. I want to be your first, baby. Okay. You're going to put my in your mouth? Because I like that. I guess I can try it. Just let me drive, baby. I'll show you heaven. <laughs> he goes on to talk about having different kinds of sex with the virgin, and then gets almost poetic. Do you want to make love or for your first time? What's the difference? It's just raw passion, and making love is a connection of bodies, I guess. Freebird72000 also mentions online that he's going to bring marijuana. Did you bring some green? No, we're going to smoke some, but we're going to get some. Cookies are good munchies. Now, you can't tell me your parents are rich. What do they do for a living? Hey, why don't you have a seat right over there? How Good, how are you? What's happened? Like so many of the men who walk into this house, the man sits and answers questions. He can't figure out if I'm the girl's father or a police officer. And remember, he has no idea he's being videotaped. What's going on? What's, you tell me what's going on. Your dad or something? What are you doing here? I'm David. How you doing? David, I'm Chris. Nice to see you. How's everything? Sure. Chilling. Birthday party. You said the girl here was going to go with you to the birthday party. Who are you? I'll get to that in a minute. All right. What's your date's name for the party? B. B. And how old is B? I don't know. He didn't really tell me. 
But she did tell him. Online, she typed her age, 14, female, South Florida. And he said, what would your parents say about you talking to someone as old as me? Then Freebird seems to worry, I'm a cop. You seem like law enforcement. I happen to know law enforcement. You do? So you're an expert in this area? No, then. no, I'm just saying, you you come off as law enforcement. Really? You know how you come off? How's that? Somebody who's very nervous. Somebody who came over here to have sex with a 14-year-old girl. 14-year-old? I read him some of what he said online. Are you sexy naked? Have you ever played with yourself? You gonna put my in your mouth? And I like Because I like dirty. that, I'll teach you. And you trying to say? I'm trying to say it makes it look like yeah. you came here. I didn't come here. I can't pick her up. To have sex with an underaged girl. We were in a role playing chat room, dude. And what role were you playing exactly here? That's, people play roles, man. In time, never ask role playing. People just talk. Oh my God, dude. Is this, is this some kind of hold up, man? You got a warrant? Because, I mean, if the girl don't want to come and if you got a problem. A warrant? What are you, a defense lawyer now? I'm saying, man. You don't got no cause to hold me. I'm, I got no problem sitting here to talk to you. Right? Okay. He sticks to the story that he's here to take the girl to a party. But it turns out he didn't come here alone. Waiting outside in the car is his sister and her two young children. He says his sister was going to drive them to the party. Yeah. And your poor sister's waiting outside with two babies in the car? Yeah. So because you had to come over here and have sex with a 14 year old. I'm girl. not. I didn't come over here have sex. You, why would you put that sister of yours? I didn't in come that over position? here to have sex. I come over here to get the girl and go to the party, dude. We learn his sister apparently didn't know he was trying to meet an underage girl. All I got to say Later, is you'll find out what happens I when I tell him I'm with Dateline. Here, Nothing funny going on here. There are more potential predators to confront. As you can see, the palm tree cam picks up another man headed our way. This time, he's riding a motorcycle. He's parking right by the door. Instead of coming in right away, he stays outside and smokes a Are cigarette. Our actress tries to get him to come inside. Call him. He's getting nervous. Hey, come on in! All right, you just put a cigarette in the trash. He's heading towards the door. He's 45-year-old Dennis Ramsey, a truck driver, screen name Daddy for You. He drove four hours to meet a girl who told him online she was 14, home alone, and willing to have sex with him. Online, daddy for you says, I just met you, I like you, and the world says it's wrong because I'm older than you. Then later, under a different screen name, Bluegrass Rules, he brings up the idea of having sex with her in a roundabout way. I said we can't have sex, but that's up to you. It might be okay. If we do, you have to assure me no one will ever find out. And where are you? Oh, hey! I'm just picking out a jacket to wear on the bike. Just take a seat. This is quite a place. Why do you like it? How are you doing? How are you doing? Good. Why don't you have a seat right over that uh, chair? Oh, man. Thanks for smoking outside. Well, Go ahead. Please have a seat. What are you up to? Well, I knew this was going to happen. You he tells me he has kids of his own and drove four hours simply to warn our teenager about the dangers of talking to, to strangers on the internet. You know, you, I came to let her know that I, if, you know, when you do that, you can be anybody. So you came to help her out out of the goodness of your heart? You know, that sounds stupid, but maybe you could say that, I don't know. And what about his chat log? You ask her what size her boobs are. She says 32B, you say yummy. And again, you get somewhat suspicious. You say, you're not trying to set me up, are you? Are you a cop? If anyone ever knew about this, I would go to jail. I can't tell you how ashamed I am. And as you'll see later, he'll be even more ashamed when he finds else? out he's going to be on national television. But first, there are more men about to arrive for their date with a young teen. Some yeah, won't stay long. No, no, sir. Wait a minute. And one man wants to take his date for a ride. Come here. And coming up a little later tonight, one of the most profoundly troubling cases we've seen. A father brings his own small child along on a date to meet an underage teen and walks into a confrontation he never expected. I gotta tell you something, and I'm gonna tell you just straight up right now. To Catch a Predator continues in a moment. He's coming, oh. Emily, hold on. Wave, 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 wave. Oh, he saw you. He saw you. He's hitting the brakes and backing up. During our undercover operations, it's not uncommon for potential predators to appear hesitant about walking in the door. He's trying to wave her out to the street. No way. 
but we've never seen anyone like this man. He's bringing his car all the way back, guys. He pulls in around back and starts asking the decoy, our actress playing a young teen, to come outside. No, you come here. It's almost 4 o'clock in the morning when 44-year-old Thomas Moffat, screen name Moff1960, pulls up to our house. He's a maintenance engineer for the Boca Raton Resort, a married man with three children. He drove more than two hours to meet a girl named Tony who said she was 15. Really, it's a decoy from perverted justice. I'm trying to hit on you and you're laughing at me? No, I'm not. Okay, good. Am I freaking you out? Why would you freak me out? Because I'm 44 and I'm hitting on you? So would you ever fool around with an old guy like me? Once they set up an actual date to meet at her house, Moff 1960 makes his plans very clear. Okay, how about after I come in, I'll strip. <laughs> For reals? Sure, if you want me to. You're kidding me. Nope. You can take your clothes off in the laundry room if you want to. He finally gets out of his car, but won't come any closer than the back step. And you said you were going to do something for me in the laundry room. Were you lying to me? Mm -mm. Are you going to back out on me? Because mm -mm. that's what I feel like you're going to do now. Cautious. Moff 1960 senses something different about the girl in the house. Can you come here, please? I'm right here. Please? In fact, something is different. Our actress is not actually the decoy who sent Moff 1960 a photograph of herself and spoke to him on the phone. That was a member of Perverted Justice. You haven't acted this way when we've talked before. Oh, really? Well, talking in person is a little different than talking online. And you don't sound the same on, in person as you did on the phone. Well... Oh, your picture looks different, too. This odd conversation goes on for half an hour. At one point, he tells her to show him proof that she is who she says she is. Get your library card. He paces outside, peeking in the window. When the decoy comes back without her library card, he tries to convince her to get in his car and go to Walgreens. Where's the Walgreens at? This is ridiculous. I'm going to bed. Okay. As we told you earlier, Fort Myers police officers are staked out in the guest house. So as the man tries to get in his car, get out! Get down! He's arrested. Get down! What are you doing? Put your hands behind your back! So we never get to tell him he's going to be on Dateline. And he wasn't the only one. Okay, guys, he's out of the car. He's walking really, really fast. This 24-year-old, Elazar Henson, screen name Importuner81, is here after making a date online with a girl posing as a 13-year-old. He told her he'd bring marijuana. Did you bring the pot? He begins to look around and appears to spot our crew upstairs. Hi. Yeah, did you bring the pot? No. And he takes off. Go take him. Take him. Here comes another man who doesn't stick around very long. He's coming up the driveway. He's walking fast. He's 43-year-old Freddy Fernandez, screen name Latinhawk63. He's been having an X-rated online chat with a decoy posing as a 15-year-old. Like several men in our investigations, he even sent her a picture of his penis. Hey, how are you? All right. Would you have a seat right in that chair? No, no, sir. Wait one minute. Get down! Now! He's walking up the driveway. And here's another man who doesn't realize he's walked into our investigation. This case of a man who calls himself Pepe is a first for us. Hey, Pepe! Do it again. Hey, Pepe, come on in. He's 41-year-old Jose Falcon, screen name Florida in Miami. He's been chatting online with a girl who said she was 12 and a virgin. He lies about his age, saying he's 27. And he says he has plans to teach the 12-year-old how to have sex. He describes in X-rated detail what he wants to do to her. The picture sent to him is of our actress. Now she's trying to get him in the house. Do it again. Hey, Pepe, are you there? Hey, come on in. Come on in, Pepe. It takes our decoy a while to get him inside. And when she does, I come out. Mark, right, please have a seat right here. No, 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 no. I... He indicates to me he's deaf. Oh, it's okay. Can you read something? And then heads for the door. Looks like this guy's deaf, guys. Get down! Get down! 
As for the rest of the potential predators who do stick around, they're full of excuses. I'm looking for work and stuff. But what will they say when they find out they're going to be on Here's national that. television? How y'all doing? NBC? Red was the color of his shirt. It was also the color of his face. Coming up, how will he react when he's nabbed by police? When To Catch a Predator continues. Welcome back to our latest investigation into online sex predators. Tonight we're in Florida where we rented a home in an upscale neighborhood and set it up with 13 hidden cameras. So far we've seen all kinds of men driving up to the house to meet up with someone posing as an underage teen home alone. Now another one is on the way and soon all these men will learn what's really happening. They're being exposed on national television. Again, Chris Hansen. Parking out front. He's out of the vehicle. The man in the black hat is 31-year-old Thomas Coffin, a self-employed handyman. He's here after making a date online for sex with a girl pretending to be 14. He tells her, I am into young girls. I like them better than the older girls. And he goes further, admitting he's done this before. When the decoy types, how young have you dated, though, he says 14. Shirt. Trying to find this place was hard. Online, he tells the girl posing as a 14-year-old several times that he loves her. He also makes it clear he's coming to the house to have sex with her. He even sends her a picture of himself naked. Hey, how are you? But when I show I up, he that, explains uh, it's there. all a big misunderstanding. What's up? I'm looking for work and stuff. Looking for work and stuff? Yeah. And what kind of work were you looking for here exactly? Uh... I do black top ceiling. And what brought you to this address exactly? Did the owner of the house call you for no, black top work? Or? I, I put ads out and stuff. Really? And did you bring all your black top stuff with you? And just come down just to look at it. Oh, just to look at it. Now, do you want to start the story again? What do you mean? Tell the truth. I talked to a lot, of, lot, lot of people. So you weren't really here to give an estimate for a black top job? No. That was a lie. Sorry about that. He also seemed sorry he sent right. that picture. It's That's appropriate? No. To send to a 14-year-old girl. He doesn't deny he sent the picture, but does he know it's a possible crime? Do you know that this is illegal to send something like this to someone you think is underage? Do you get that? Yeah. Oh, it won't happen again. I can tell you that one. Then he tries to explain it all away as one big computer glitch. I shut down my computer and stuff and... My computer's messed up. Your computer, so it just, what, magically typed itself no. like a player piano? No, it's messed up. I'm saying I got a virus in it and stuff. Well, what's messed up is this conversation. So what was your intent today? Just to babysit until she's no, old enough to... Just come over and say hi. That was it. But how will he explain that online the decoy said. asked him to bring condoms? I, and he I, just I, happens to have them, put them on in the his table. shirt pocket. Uh, I always have them on. You always carry them right there in your pocket? Well, yeah, it was, I sit on them. They end up getting uh, crushed. Do you see how this looks, Thomas? Yeah, it looks bad. And it looks bad for all the men you've seen walking in our door. I don't like myself right now at all, man. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on adults who meet teens on the Internet. Like most of the men who find out they've been caught in a Dateline undercover investigation, this man, the 45-year-old truck driver who made plans online to meet a girl who told him she was 14, has nothing more to say. You're obviously free to walk out that door that you came in. I will do that. Thank you. But he won't get very far. Get down. Get your ass on the ground now. Fort Myers police are ready to make the arrest. Do everything you're told, you will not get hurt. He's taken away in an unmarked police car and brought to a transfer station. Spread your legs out. Where he's searched, put in another car, and transported to jail. Meanwhile, back at our house, another man thinks he has his own solution to being exposed on national television. Remember the 21-year-old who duped his sister into driving him to meet a girl who said she was 14? See, okay. we're doing a story do on look adults kind of who try to meet kids on the internet. Uh, hey, man, I don't want, I don't want to um, be on, on the news, you feel me? We are filming. I don't want to be on the news, dog. Well, it's a little late for that, dog. 
Now, if there's anything else you want to tell me... He quickly comes up with a disguise. And as far as interviews go, this may be a television first. All I got to say is, ain't no, nothing going on here, dude. Nothing funny going on here. Nothing funny going on. No. The girl, if the girl's really 14, then I know, but... She told you she was 14. See, we were in the role-playing chat room, dude. You know how many times I hear that? Am I being held up here? You're not being held up. You're free to walk out that same do, door you do, walked in. Do y'all want to interview? Hey, how y'all doing? Okay. How y'all doing? NBC? NBC. NBC. And you're Chris, Chris Hansen. All right, Dateline listen. NBC. Let me, let, me, let me explain something to NBC for a second here. I, I don't know what kind of um, rap y'all got on, on people, but maybe y'all can get the whole story because this girl is in a role-playing chat room. Whose house is this? Can I smoke with you? No, right you now? can't smoke with this. I don't think so. You can smoke outside. All right, dude. Whatever. He decides to go out the front door. Run into the car. Move. But that doesn't stop detectives from catching him and placing him under arrest. And when he shows up at the transfer station, police search him, and he keeps talking. Y'all thought y'all were going to get some green. Hey, NBC, two words, role plan, chat room, dude, because the girl was role playing, man. We checked with perverted justice and were told he met the decoy in a Florida romance room, not a role-playing chat room. What's that for your um for your pedophile thing? Yeah. And the transcripts of his online chats and phone calls were enough for police to charge him with a felony. Yeah. Good, because when, well, when, when I see you found not guilty, I'm sue somebody. Even after he's placed in the police car, he goes on talking. I'm not I'm not guilty, man. I, do I look like I need 14-year-old girls? And he has even more to say when he's brought to the jail. NBC again. Hey. How y'all doing, NBC? It turns out there was at least one thing he said earlier that turned out to be true. I happen to know law enforcement. You do see he has quite a long rap sheet. In 2002, he led police on a high-speed chase in a stolen car. He was also convicted of grand theft and trying to sell the stolen goods. And twice, he was convicted of battery. Back at the transfer station, police are searching suspects' vehicles. I think it's the coffin tent This car belongs to the 31-year-old man in the black hat. He was planning on meeting a girl who said she was 14. He had uh, some condoms were in there. The address of the, uh, of the location was on there, a piece of paper, so we took all that as evidence. This car belongs to the man who ran after spotting our crew. He showed up to meet a girl who said she was 13. Located uh, notebook with some address to the uh, target house. Cell phone, two condoms. Kodak Funsaver camera, and three adult magazines. And this car belongs to the 45-year-old who was too afraid to come into the house and meet a girl who told him she was 12. That's a wreck. Like over-the-counter bag or something. What kind of effort did it take for the police to handle an operation this big? Chief Hilton Daniels is the man in charge. We had... Uh, 50-something police officers. We had uh, officers from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, and we had attorneys from the state attorney's office directing the takedowns. And it was the interrogations, according to Chief Daniels, that proved to be their best evidence. They confessed to exactly what was read to them off the, uh, off the chat logs. Hello? Remember this man, Michael Willis, screen name generic white male? He's the 49-year-old who came to meet a girl who said she's 15. He was the one who threw the cookie. You know what? I don't want this cookie. And left. I have some more questions for you. he could walk away from Dateline's interview, he couldn't walk away from Detective Jennifer Ladelfa. Confessed to everything that he had um, solicited her over the Internet, stated that he knew that she was underage, and that he'd come down here to make his fantasy come to fruition. While for some men it might take getting arrested and then being interrogated before confessing, back at the house you're about to meet two men who admit doing things you won't believe. I had nude pictures of her on my computer. Coming up, it's not the first time our next suspects say they've targeted underage teens. How often do you meet underage girls online? Probably 10, 15. 10, 15. Underage girls you've met online. The Catch a Predator continues in a moment. He's 
pull in the driveway, go out and throw a little wave at him. This is 27-year-old Eric Thornton, screen name Balin79. He drove four hours thinking he was going to meet a girl who told him online she was 14. At one point during the chat, he gets on his webcam and masturbates and types, did you see it? The decoy says, not really, too dark, and he types back, shoot, and then brags about what he had just done. Yo, Liz. Now, he's in our house. Hey, come on in. All right. I made some chocolate chip cookies and I left them on the table. Just take a seat. I'll be right there. That's fine. No problem. Mmm, these are good. You like them? Mmm. I made them all by myself. I can't wait to see you. I know. Online, he said he'd bring alcohol and condoms, so the actress asks him about it. What kind of alcohol did you bring? Um, I brought Absolute Citron, I brought Mandarin Orange, I brought a shot of Jägermeister, I got, uh, Bush. Wow. And, yeah. Um, I don't know, I could get some more if I need to. Did you bring condoms? Mm-hmm. Good. Well, with all that, it sounds like you've got a pretty big night planned, huh? Yep. Two different kinds of vodka. Mm -hmm. Brought some beer. And what else? That's it. That's it. Condoms. So what was your plan here tonight? My plan? Just to hang out. To hang out. Mm -hmm. And you thought it was okay as a 27-year-old to come here and meet a 14-year-old with alcohol and condoms? No, no, no. Then why did you do it? Because I, I just thought it was like a good idea. A good, a good idea? Good idea Turns out, he that. says, this isn't the first time he's gone after underage teens. How often do you meet underage girls online and set up a visit? Not that much. Ballpark it for me. Um, probably 10, 15. 10, 15. Have you met them in person? Mm hmm And what did you do when you met them in person? Uh, just... Well, actually, I didn't really meet them. I he keeps changing his story. Finally, he admits he has a problem when it comes to chatting with underage girls online. I've, I've went to counseling many, many times. So based upon the fact that you're here to meet a 14-year-old, that counseling isn't working out too well, is it? I don't know. It's possible that the counseling isn't working because he says he stopped going about five months ago. Did you plan on spending the night? Yes, I, 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 I wanted to spend the night, but I didn't want to do anything too graphic until I actually met that person. Well, what do you think should happen to you, Eric? Just go home and learn from this. That's but he's I'm not going to get off that easy. Yeah, it's time to tell him who I am. I'm Chris Hansen from Dateline NBC, and we... He doesn't run when he sees adults. the cameras. Instead, he decides to give any potential predator this advice. Just... Whatever you do, do not get into underage people at all. I feel regretful. I feel horrible that I did this. But that heartfelt speech, those words of wisdom, won't help him this time around. Please get down the ground! Get down the ground! Like all the other men you've seen, he's patted down, photographed, and his car is searched. We got a sheet from beer that Ezra found in his, in his pocket. left front pocket. And off to jail. Most of the men who came to our undercover house were chatting online with decoys for a week or more. Red pickup's coming back. But not this potential predator. He's 48-year-old Donald Morrison, screen name Donnie, 1957, male. He started the online chat with a girl posing as a 15-year-old at 8 p.m. this very same night. Wasting no time, he types, I want to meet you and fool around. Are you up to meeting tonight, hon? Then he makes a plan to come to her house around 11 p.m. He's walking up. The guy's in the driveway for those It's now 11.30, and look who's walking up the driveway. He's opening the door. Hello. Hey, come on in. We well, got a big house. Try one of my cookies. They're so good. Chocolate chip's my favorite. Mine, too. When I make them for Christmas, I make about 10 dozen of them. Whoa. Why so many? Because we usually got family in from the up north. We had like 14 of us here this year. Holy cow. Can I get you a glass of milk to go along with those cookies? Sure. What's going on? 
I don't know, I just was talking to her and she said, come down and visit her. Just like our other visitor, he admits he has a problem when it comes to underage girls. I have a compulsion just to, with her younger women, just meeting them. I haven't, I've met about a dozen of them online. And so this is something you do frequently? No, I haven't done it in, well, let's see, I haven't done it since I moved here to Florida. And where did you live before? Texas. And so you did this a lot in Texas. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get in trouble for it? Yeah. Yeah? Well, I got in trouble because I met a girl in Michigan. And how old was that girl? 17. And what trouble did you get in there? Well, her grandfather tried to charge me with something they couldn't do anything. So they arrested me for possessing child pornography because I had nude pictures of her on my computer. They ended up dropping the charges. And how did you get the naked pictures of the teenage girl? I met her in Michigan. And I took them. You took the pictures of the girl, mm -hmm. and then you put them on your computer? On my computer, yeah, they were digital pictures. After the 48-year-old asks the decoy online if she's looking for sex, he brings up the possibility that she might be a cop. What made you think that this might be a police operation? I don't know, just after seeing all these things on Dateline, you know, I don't, I, like I said, this is the first time I've done it since I've been here. So you've seen all the Dateline stories? Mm hmm And what did you think of those stories? I thought some of them were pretty, were pretty bad. I mean, I saw the one where they were coming over for sex with boys and stuff like that. You right. know, and I, you know, I'm I'm not in, I'm not really into you know pedophilia. You know, this might be this is probably considered that. And I know this is probably going to be on Dateline too. So go ahead and put it on. Well, you know, Ryan. Yeah. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline right. NBC. I understand. I know who I recognize from the voice. And everything you've just said and done has all been recorded. Okay. And if you have anything else you'd like to tell us, we'd like to hear it. Just saying that, you know, I shouldn't have done it. I mean, I'm, this is something I normally don't, don't go out and do. I want you to be honest with me. If I wasn't here tonight and a young girl was, who was alone and willing to have sex, what do you think would have happened? Probably would have happened. Probably would have had sex. You yes. would have gone ahead and done it. Probably, yes. I mean, I could say honestly, yes, it probably would have if she would have, if she would have you know, said, hey, let's go for it. And you don't see anything wrong with that? Yes, I do see things wrong with it, but I had lack of judgment. And here's a first. Before he leaves, Thank he you, actually thanks Thank me. You. Thank you for bringing you know, kicking me in the pants and setting me straight, Chris. He leaves through the back door and the police are waiting. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! On the ground. He's taken to the transfer station. When he gets to the jail, he goes into diabetic shock. He's taken in handcuffs to the hospital where he's treated and then brought back to jail. The next day, he appears before a judge. Donald Morrison, you're charged with a sex offense against a child. Your Honor, may I ask a question? No, sir. Okay. When we return, if you're outraged over what you've seen so far, watching these suspects, you'll be saddened by what you witness next. What this man did stunned everyone who saw it. Oh, oh no. Kidding. Oh, my God. A father brings his own five-year-old son to the house when To Catch a Predator continues. Deli's backing out now. He's After conducting four in internet life. predator investigations in four different states, you'd backing think we'd be prepared car. for anything. He's getting out of the car. But what happens here in Florida shocks us all. Oh, oh no. Oh, my God. He brought his son with him. He brought his son with him. He's got his child with him. He's a 40-year-old married man, Clifford Wallach, screen name Photofix. He's here to meet a boy who told him online he was 14. Dell from Perverted Justice, posing as the boy, talks to Photofix on the phone. He said, I like oral all aspects. I said, giving or receiving. He said, both. I said, cool. He said, you up for that? I said, sure. Coming in the back door. Holding his son's hand, the 40-year-old walks into the house. Where'd you go? Because we don't want to scare the little boy, we immediately tell the man what's going on. I gotta tell you something, and I'm gonna tell you just straight up right yeah. now. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Okay. We're doing a story 
on adults eating children. And since you have your child here, I'm not going to pursue this. Okay. But I think you know what you are doing here, don't you? No, I was just doing this and to lose. My point is, because your child is here, I think it'd be best if you just went ahead okay. and left. Yeah, I agree. I never can do this again. Since the police know the man has his son with him... Sir, right there. You come here. You come here. Let go of the child. A female officer quickly takes the little boy and whisks him away so he doesn't have to further witness his father's arrest. Please give me my son, please. He's taken away in handcuffs and brought to the transfer station. Please, I want to stay with my son. That's not an option for now, sir. I didn't do nothing wrong. I was okay, only sir, coming to take somebody to lunch. I can't feel my hands, please. The police contact the boy's mother at work, tell her what's going on, and she comes and gets him. You want to get a drink? Yeah? Meanwhile, the dad is taken to jail. Come on in, make a left. Photographed and put behind bars. He and most of the other men in Florida have pleaded not guilty. While his story is upsetting, in the driveway. The story of a man you'll meet next week is downright bizarre. That's him right there. He's pulling in the driveway. This potential predator comes in the house, whips off his clothes, and proceeds to search for a young teen. You want to explain yourself? And we'll tell you what he planned to do with that teenager. You're naked. There's a 14-year-old girl. You're chasing a cat around. You've got Cool Whip. And you can find information on what you can do to protect children from Internet predators on our website. Just log on to dateline.msnbc.com. That's all for now. I'm Stone Phillips for Ann Curry and all of us at NBC News. Thanks for watching.